Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And you found out that she had been stabbed by a man whose name is Douglas Mickey. Correct. And what are you obviously feeling when you... Well, I went through all the normal stages of grieving. At the beginning, I was crying all the time. I was in absolute denial. I knew she was going to walk in the door. It was impossible to have lost her. Uh, and I got through these different stages until I got to the stage of anger. It's a normal stage of grieving process. But what were you feeling toward the guy who did this to her? Well, I was feeling incredible lust for revenge. Uh. Uh, someone had to pay for this terrible thing that had happened to her. And they did, they found him, they convicted him, they put him on death row. And I knew that he was in San Quentin, in California, on death row. And I couldn't understand why it was taking so long. So you were glad about that? You wanted him to get the death Absolutely, penalty? Absolutely, because the district attorney promised me that when he was executed, that everything would be all right again, that I would be well once more. And you felt that way, that kind of anger toward him for how long? I, that went on for eight long years. And then what, a waste. what, what shifted? Well, I started on a spiritual journey that wasn't planned. I didn't say, I don't want to feel like this anymore. Let me do something else. It just these wonderful people came into my life. Wonderful classes opened up to me. Wonderful books opened up to me. And I went through a period of four years of just seeking and searching. And at the end of that four years... I found myself able to forgive Douglas Mickey for murdering Catherine. What did you do? How did you express the forgiveness? I sat down that night at 4 o'clock in the morning and I typed a letter I, to Douglas Mickey mm -hmm. telling him about Catherine, telling him about well, what did her loss mean to me and what did it mean to my family, but that I would found I could forgive him. When I dropped the letter in the mailbox, all the anger, all the rage, all that ugliness I've been carrying around in my body for 12 long years was instantly gone. And you heard back from him? I did hear back from him and I was afraid to open the letter because I knew everybody on death row was a monster and what kind of a letter would a monster write. So I was very surprised when I opened the letter because what I found in that letter was expressions of such sorrow and deep remorse and deep spiritual feelings that I was so, I was so moved that I answered the letter. And then you decided that not only that, but you had to go meet this man And in person. he invited me to visit him, and so I filled out all the paperwork, and I, it took 90 days to get permission to go. And so finally I did. I went to meet him in person. So what's that like? You walk into the room for the first time to meet the man who killed your daughter. What was that like? It was the most frightening day of my life. I'm not quite sure how my car got there, because I don't know who was driving it. But I walked into the visiting room, and at that time, the visiting room, all the people from death row were in there. And I looked around this room, and the thing that surprised me the most, there was not a single monster in that room. They were all ordinary-looking men. They were sitting visiting with their wives, their children, their priests, their friends, whatever. But you know what, Abigail? Not everybody who goes through what you did feels that way. I mean, you know parents who've had children killed and they want revenge. I mean, I've heard that someone said to you, you must not have loved your daughter as much as I loved mine. I mean, how do you respond to people who don't buy that? Well, for one thing, I never argue with them because those are their feelings and that's how they feel. It took me 12 years, so I never put a time limit on someone else's healing process. What, however long it takes to heal is how long it takes. Some people never get there. I feel deeply sorry for them because I know their pain. I've been there. I felt the pain myself. This is what I have to teach people. Hmm. And it's important that people understand that because not just for murder victim families, but for anyone who has suffered a loss or cruelty. Or, I mean, the, the idea of forgiving other right. people, I think it comes through to us from every religious training that there is.